Okay, so I've typed out the two questions that we're talking about here, um, journal entries and a process costing, and I just want to go back and just review the rules of journal entries. So we have assets, liabilities, capital, revenues, and expenses. And each of these type have a normal balance. The normal balance is the side that we're going to um, journalize to if we want it to increase. So if you want an asset to go up, you'll always debit it. If you want an asset to go down, you'll always credit it. If you want a capital to go up, you'll credit it. If you want it to go down, you'll debit it, and so on and so forth. So the accounts that we're concerned with in process costing are going to be our inventory accounts are going to be the main ones. Um, inventory, of course, is an asset. So raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. These are our three categories of inventory. They're all assets, so anytime we want them to go up, we'll debit them. Whenever we want them to go down, like we're transferring out of them, then we'll credit them. I put manufacturing overhead in italics because it is going to eventually go into work in process. It's a temporary account, meaning we're going to accumulate all the actual manufacturing overhead amounts, and then before we do any financial statements, we're going to allocate it and put it in a work in process. So just think about this account is going to accumulate and then be allocated to the work in process. So each of these are assets. And this one will act like an asset. So I'll put asset, but I'm going to put it in, italic in italics because it's really just a temporary account that's going to eventually go into this asset. So that means whenever we want to increase these, we're going to debit them. And whenever we need to decrease them, for example, if we're ready to transfer something out because it's been complete, then we're going to credit them. All right, some other accounts that we may see. Cost of goods sold is an expense. It is that price that we paid for the good, so it's an expense. So whenever we want it to go up, we'll debit it. Whenever we want it to go down, we'll credit it. Revenue, we may see if it says that you sold something. Um, it's revenue, and so it's going to go up with the credit and down with the debit. And wages payable, for example, when we have some direct wages, we're going to put it in work in process, so we would debit work in process. And then we would also increase wages payable, because that's a liability, and to increase a liability, we will credit it. So we'll say that this is a liability, and to increase a liability, we credit it, and to decrease it, we debit it. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is look at these um, up here. It says, assume that a company has two processing departments. Mixing followed by firing. Jur prepare a journal entry to show a transfer of work in process from the mixing to the firing. So firing is the one that is going to need to be increased. So we would say work in process, I'm just going to say WIP, and that would be firing. And I'm going to debit that because that's the one that's going to be getting um, the cost now. So they need to increase. So um, I'm going to debit it. It doesn't tell me the amount of it. And then um, it's going to be coming out of work in process mixing. So that's going to be my credit entry. And that would be the answer to that one. The second one, assume that a company has two processing departments, mixing followed by firing. Explain what costs might be added to the firing department's work in process during a period. So during a period, they may have some materials that would be added. Okay, so. It would also include um, labor during the period for that department, and it would also include some manufacturing overhead, and it would likely also include the costs that were transferred in from the previous department. So that would be the, let's see, we're doing the firing department, so that would be the cost transferred in. Sorry about the dog from the mixing department. All right, and the problem doesn't ask it, but just for a little bit of practice, if we were to look at the journal entries when these things happen, if I said that materials were requisitioned to the, um, let's see, the mixing department, uh, no, the firing department, then what we would do is we would say, we would debit work in process firing department, because costs are going in, so we need to increase that inventory. Um, and then we would credit 
our materials because we would want to reduce those and those are an asset to make an asset go down with credit it. So that would be how we put those materials into this department. If we had some labor costs, then we would also increase our work in process for our firing department. And then we would have a wages payable account so that we could have a liability to pay our employees. And then for manufacturing overhead, when we, we would be allocating it. So basically we would be taking it out of manufacturing overhead and in the work in process. So we would say work in process, firing department. And then we're going to allocate it out of the manufacturing overhead. Remember we said that it has a debit balance. So to reduce it, we would credit it. And again, that one is allocating manufacturing overhead to the work in process. So we're assigning some of it to it. And then um, cost transferred in from the mixing department, that's like the one that we did in the previous question. So we're going to be um, increasing work in process firing because that's where it's going to. And then we're going to be decreasing work in process mixing department because that's what it's coming out of and those work like an asset. So let me know if you have any questions on this.